All right, welcome back. As promised, let's do some of your questions. Jim, GE. What's your what's your take on GE yeah, right now? I'm staying away from it. Um, it's a little too hard for me. Look, first off, there's a ton of debt. Second off, one of their crown jewels is the is the airplane uh, business, which obviously is impaired. Uh, one of their big customers is obviously the energy industry. I think it's just too tough. And if you're going to take a flyer on this, you really better get into the balance sheet and understand how debt is cross-correlated, what covenants are. Just too hard for me. All right. That, that's from John, by the way, in Needham, Mass. My, my apologies. I had my, my paper uh, misplaced. All right. Steve Weiss, coming to you now. It's from John in Kansas. Teradyne, sell or hold? So I'm still holding it. Uh, this is another one where I bought some. I bought it after earnings. I bought before. And on the pop, it just had a huge move, finally. I was wrong initially. So I sold a little of the overage, but it's still a good position. I still love it. It's 5G play. All right, Pete, to you. Asan in Chicago, Illinois. What do you think of Under Armour here, Pete? Yeah, you know, as a trade, Scott, I, I, I really like it. I was just in some options not too terribly long ago. They did not work out. But I still think it from a trading perspective, trading vehicle, I like Under Armour. But... In terms of a holder, I still prefer Lululemon. I like what this company does, the resiliency, and I think there's still plenty of upside still left. Okay, Brenda, you from Ray in Los Angeles. Is New Residential Investment Corp, NRZ, is that a buy, hold, or sell? Um, it's a buy. I bought it in the mid sixes. It's probably around $5.80, 85 cents. It's a mortgage servicing company. The CEO, Michael Nirenberg, is an excellent CEO. But obviously, they're a mortgage servicer company, which people are not being required to pay their mortgages, and they're still required to pay their dividend or their yield. So it's a flyer, position it right, but I think it's going to be a survivor here. Great CEO. It was a great company before all of this, and I think we need these mortgage servicers around for a long time to be healthy. So I'm a buyer and a hold here. You worry that the dividend could be at risk? Oh, it already has been, by the way. It was, you know, prior to this, it was a $15 stock with probably a 15% 15, 15% dividend, 12 to 15% dividend, they've already cut it. So once again, they're a really strong company. This, the C-suite has done the right thing. They've sold a lot of their mortgages. But what's interesting is the government really hasn't stepped in and helped the mortgage servicers in general, which is a little bit peculiar, and we'll, we'll see what happens. But we can't have Fannie and Freddie actually servicing the mortgages themselves. They're not built to do that. You need these companies to be strong, and they need to be survivors here. So that's why I hold it. But once again, size it right, because the government really hasn't stepped in and helped these companies. All right, Jim Labenthal, Ed Carlstadt, New Jersey. Do you like GM without its dividend? And I should also point out that GM reports its earnings on Wednesday. Right. Uh, so, yes, the answer is yes. I'm very interested in what those earnings look like. For a long time, I've believed, as have others, that they could still be profitable in a 10 million North American sales rate environment. We're a little bit below that, but starting to come back. J.D. Power sees the month of May being materially better than April. And, you know, by the way, interesting side note, in China, April sales of autos were greater than they were a year ago. So not just greater compared to March and February, greater than a year ago. China is a big market for GM. So, look, a lot of bad news is priced in. Maybe not any of the good news is priced in. Wow. So you, so you think you got a target on this thing, Jim? Well, you know what? The nice thing, Scotty, at this price, it's easy to put in a price target of, say, 27 and realize that that's a heck of a nice return from here. So let's talk, it at a, talk about it at 27. OK, fair enough. Good stuff. Steve Weiss, uh, from, uh, to you from Abe, uh, what's your outlook on Twitter? It's not very good. So Jack Dorsey, it's been controversial because he's CEO of Twitter and Square. So Twitter got the best it could possibly get. I think their fundamentals are still challenged. But you're going to be diluting Dorsey's concentration because Square has many more problems. They're small business. They got credit focus. So I'm staying away from both, frankly. OK, Pete Roddy, North Carolina, AXP, American Express. Is it a buy? I like the name. Yeah, well, I like the name. I own the name, Scott. And yes, I do think it's a buy. If you want to have something that's some of it, you get a little sprinkle of Visa and Master, but you also have a little bit of a banking side to it. So you're, there are good things and bad things about that. And it moves around a little bit more with the banks, quite frankly. It's down a little bit today. I like this name. I still think there's plenty of upside. And it's so very inexpensive when you look at the pro, what its P.E. looks like right now. So I think there's plenty of more upside 
from here, but we're going to have to have a lot of things happen for the financials to start to move better to the upside. Yeah, we mentioned this is one of Buffett stocks, too. All right, Bryn, lastly to you from yep. Wyatt in Oregon. It's a good question, general question on the markets. When considering taking profits on a stock, is there a generally accepted amount of appreciation that triggers that decision? Also, how much of the stock should be sold? I think it's a good question. I don't think there's a general answer, but two things I would say. Number one, you can't go broke taking profits. So don't fall in love with your stocks and you can't go broke taking profits. And number two, number two, I would look at the technicals. See what the stocks you're buying, what the trend line's been before. I think that will give you a better idea of the upside potential. And then number three also, I like to have a core satellite approach. Have, a, have, the, have the company that you own and then maybe you can trade around the satellite position. And so I would just stick with those three things.